Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning at uh, beautiful Petco Park. I'm Don Orsillo, and today is just an unbelievable day for us at the San Diego Padres. We'd also like to welcome our viewers on Valley Sports San Diego, MLB Network, as well as our listeners on 97.3 The Fan and Padres.com. This is truly a monumental day in the history of the Padres franchise. I'm humbled and honored to be the first to introduce the newest members of the Padres. Please welcome Josh Bell to my left, Juan Soto. Alongside the stage this morning is Padres Chairman Peter Seidler, as well as A.J. Preller. We'll begin the program with opening remarks from Peter and A.J. before we open it up to the floor and grab your questions here today. So with that, I welcome Peter Seidler. First, I'd like to welcome Juan Soto and Josh Bell. Everybody in our organization is excited to have you here. And equally important, as you'll see on the field tonight, it's going to be electric. Our fans um, have a really special, kind of mutually fun uh, dynamic with the players. Um, they feed off of each other, and um, bringing you into our organization is, is a, a special moment for all of us. So thank you guys for being here. Um, secondly, I would like to thank our great fans. They're, they're consistent, energetic, and electric relationship that, that our fans, you, have built with our players goes beyond anything I've ever seen and certainly um, is growing by the moment. So we look forward to seeing all of you out here tonight and, and in the near future. <clears throat> also, the, I have to mention the players in our dugout who are outstanding on and off the field. They make all things possible. <clears throat> Thank you, Manny Machado our team leaders, and every single one of our players top to bottom. <clears throat> Again, it's going to be pretty darn electric in the ballpark tonight. And finally, AJ, <clears throat> thank you and your staff for the steady and relentless approach. You have shifted San Diego baseball for the better. The art of the possible is here. Juan and Josh, welcome to San Diego Baseball. I think uh, a couple of things, like I mentioned yesterday, um, I think we're, we're here in large part. Um, you know, our, our, our scouting and development group uh, put us in this type of position where we can we can make this type of decision and have the ability to, to, to make a deal like this. I'll just highlight uh, Pete DeYoung, Mark Connor, Riley Westman. Um, and Chris Kemp, they've been the directors of the department's amateur pro international scouting and player development over the last seven years. Uh, and just highlighting the work of all of our scouts and, and coaches have done a great job, developed some, some, uh, some really talented players that, uh, um, that ultimately uh, we, we were able to make this deal. I think also the Nats with Mike Rizzo, you know, you need a, a, a trade partner. It's one of the biggest trades in baseball history. Uh, they did a great job, um, you know, getting players that are going to help their organization. Uh, when you hear guys like Jay Robertson and Casey McKeon and, uh, you know, Dan Jennings are out scouring our system, um, you know, uh, you, you know that they're, they're uh, that, that uh, unfortunately, they're, they're probably going to hit on the guys that they need to hit on to make this type of deal. Um, but you also know that we have a chance to connect because it's a really good baseball group that's, that's won a World Series over there before, and they've, uh, they've been where we're, where we're trying to get to. Um, I think as far as Juan and Josh, I think starting, starting with Juan, I mean, everybody knows, you know, batting title, Silver Slugger awards, uh, Home Run Derby champ, All-Star games, uh, most importantly, World Series champion, the list goes on and on. I think one story uh, from our standpoint, we have a little bit of history with, with Juan from, from when he was a younger guy. Uh, but after 20, I believe going into the 2019 season, I think he had just finished top five, maybe top two in Rookie of the Year. And, and we got word, we were in our offices, and Josh Stein, our assistant GM, got word that there was a, a pro player that was hitting over at Point Loma Nazarene uh, in the off season in January. And I uh, came back and said, yeah, Juan Soto's over there working on his craft in, in January in the off season. 
Uh, so somebody that already had, had established himself as one of the best hitters in the game and going from the Dominican Republic, uh, not just to, to the East Coast, but coming out to the West Coast and, you know, grinding on the West Coast because he wanted to learn from one of the hitting coaches that was in the NAT system, I guess, that was here. Uh, I think that kind of always resonated with us. Um, when we talk about, you know, somebody that uh, is extremely talented but wants to be the best and just constantly is, is, is just pursuing, you know, this isn't a constant pursuit to be the best in the game. I think we all kind of took stock, Peter, myself, Eric, uh, our baseball team, when we said, hey, if we get a chance to ever acquire uh, somebody like Juan, that, that's the type of guy we want uh, in the middle of our lineup and leading our organization. So really excited today uh, to, to sit here next to Juan and have him in our organization. And then with Josh, I think he just said it, not bad for a throw-in. So uh, <laughs> not bad at all. I think uh, he was not a throw-in in this deal. He was a huge part of the trade for us. Uh, you know, a switch, you know, a switching bat and over 300, everything he's done in his in his career. I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, one thing that, uh, that he wants to do, play in the postseason and win a World Series ring. Uh, we're super excited to have both guys here to do today and uh, ready to roll here in the next couple of months. So congrats. Thank you. Thanks. At this time, the floor is open for questions. We have microphones on both sides of the room currently with JP and Tiffany. Please raise your hand, wait for the microphone to come to you, and then state your name and your affiliation, and we will call on you. Uh, we will begin with a question from Kevin Acey. Juan, I'm sure this has been a uh, challenging, stressful, uh, somewhat exciting time. You speak to that a little bit, and then your thoughts on joining the, the Padres, this lineup, and what they're doing. Uh, I, uh, like you say, it's been a really exciting moment for me, uh, for my family, <clears throat> a really big part of my career. I'm happy to join this team. I mean, I've been seeing this team since day one in this season, and they've been doing a great job uh, playing good baseball, and I'm more than excited to join a, and a winning team and be part of it and try my best to push them as long as we can. If I could follow up with Josh. Josh, um, sounds like you're – uh, you, know, you, you know kind of where you fit in this, but you're having a heck of a season. I wonder how you feel about leaving Washington and joining this team. Well, I'm excited. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm, I'm pumped to meet the guys in the clubhouse. Um, obviously, you know, Manny's here. Um, get to see Joe Musgrove again. Um, get to play with Trent Grissom, you know, another Texas guy. So uh, I'm pumped to get going, pumped to get started today. Juan, can you, can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Fernando Tatis Jr., both in the Dominican and how you guys have stayed in touch and what you think it'll be like to be on the same team together now? Uh, I have, we have a great relationship even <clears throat> before we were in teammates, and uh, it was an amazing time. We always talk to each other. We always try. We always hope the best to each other. Uh, it was a great relationship. I think now it's going to increase, and it's going to be way better. I think it's going to be like a family. Uh, for me, just a tighter moment to be with him and Manny from the Dominican Republic, Masara, and all those guys. It's just going to be great moments. Uh, it's going to be a great energy in there. And get to know those guys a little bit more. It's going to be more exciting. And Josh, you talked about Joe. He mentioned you yesterday, had a lot of really nice things to say about you. Um, what was it like for you finding out that you were part of this trade? You know, what, what, what were the hours like leading up to that? And was it a little surprising to you when you, when you first found out? No, yeah, I did my best to stay off my phone for a few days leading up into the, the deadline. And, you know, obviously I got a call from, from Riz and I got a call from SB um, letting me know. And, and Joe was the first guy that I texted. Um, and, you know, he, he called shortly thereafter and, you know, I congratulated him for the uh, extension and, you know, just for all the success that he's had here. Um, and he was pumped for me. You know, he's pumped for, you know, the rest of the season um, for this, you know, playoff run that we're going to have. And, you know, hopefully, you know, wearing that, that ring next year. So, uh, you know, he's, he's a workhorse, and, you know, I'm pumped to be able to play with him again. Over here. You guys were both uh, rumored in trades for a couple weeks now. Did you ever envision that you'd be coming to the same team together, and what was your reaction when you found out that you would be coming to here together? For me, uh, I never realized uh, I was going to be traded together. Uh, I wasn't thinking probably by myself and – all the rumors and stuff that they were doing it, I was thinking about myself. But whenever I realized I'm coming with Josh, uh, we, I have a great relationship with him and the team. And I was more excited and more pumped because he's coming. And I know what type of guy he is and what he has, uh, what he brings to the table. And 
more than excited to share another clubhouse with him. No, yeah, same thing for me. Uh, you know, it's, it's awesome to be able to, to be traded and, you know, share a flight with somebody that, you know, you played with for a few years. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pumped to be here with Juan. Obviously, there was so many uh, speculations and you can go here, here, and here. Um, like I said, I just try to stay off my phone as best I could and, and focus on baseball. Juan, what do you make of what this lineup could be when everyone's healthy and everyone's in there? It's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be really exciting. It's going to be really tough to go through. And <laughs> I wish good luck to the other pitch. <laughs> Up next, Bryce Miller. Uh, first for Juan and Josh, um, Peter mentioned uh, the art of the possible is here. And, and partially that's fueled, I think, by what AJ has been willing to do over his time here in San Diego. and. This deal, a lot of people said, was impossible to, to get Juan Soto with the Padres. Your first meetings with, with AJ, what, now that you've met this guy, the, the maniac MLB trader guy, the, you know all the names that they use, what were your first impressions? What were the first conversations? Uh, mostly all the conversations is about to win. Let's win. Let's uh, bring the good energy to the, to the clubhouse, to the stadium. Just come here and try to win. Try to bring my experience from 2019 uh, as a World Series champ, uh, and try to bring that that to here to San Diego, and that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I have in my mind since the, since I see the trade yesterday, and that's what we're gonna try to do. Try to make it all the way to the to the last team stand. Any any personal impressions of those first meetings with AJ? I mean. I was expecting what we were going to talk about. Uh, so for me, just get to know these guys and see how open they are with the players is the most impressive thing that I see. And uh, I think it's going to be a really good relationship. Josh? No, yeah. Um, you know, first phone call with, with AJ yesterday, um, you know, he asked about my parents. Met them years ago um, when I was, you know, an amateur player uh, just playing in high school. So. You know, first and foremost, he asked about family. I think that's really important. Um, and, and going from there, um, it was just excitement about, you know, the pieces that, you know, he was adding. Uh, that was before the, the jury pickup. So, uh, you know, he, he had some other things in the work as well. Um, you know, it's pumped. You know, I'm pumped to, to finally play with Josh Hader. Um, I'm, I'm pumped to play on, on a winning team. Um, and like you said, it's, it's an exciting time. Um, and, you know, the time is now for the Padres. So let's get after it. Adam? I was going to ask you guys, how does it feel to go from a team that was out of contention to one that's in the wild card thick of things in the playoff hunt? <laughs> it feels really nice. Uh, it, <clears throat> it feels really pumped to be here. And like, like you say, just going from a team that has no chance to come all the way here, you just, it's a great feeling. It's a new vibe. Uh, it's a new start for me. Uh, this year, it's just a new start, a new, new feeling to go out there and give more that I have. No, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, we pour our hearts and souls into this game. No matter where we are, if we have a jersey on, um, we're going to you know, leave it all on the field. But, you know, it's a little bit extra fuel on the fire uh, to, to be here and to be, you know, in the hunt and, you know, to have a, a reason to show up a little bit earlier every day um, and get the, the work done that we need to get done. So uh, I'm definitely pumped uh, to, to have, you know, a new opportunity here. Uh, question for AJ. Um, when did you first engage the Nationals in trade discussions for Juan and, and Josh as well? Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think right. You know, we'd, uh, right right around maybe All Star break or so. I, I think you know, I think uh, when it, when it became apparent that that you know that I think Mike said we'd be open to to listening. Um, maybe minutes after that announcement or so uh, was the first phone call, but. Yeah, I think things got serious over the last week, obviously, going back and forth. And, and really up until, I think I said this yesterday, up until, uh, you know, the night, like late, late, or the night before the trade deadline, we, we didn't know. You never really know. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition and, you know, deals are never, you know, done until they're, they're completed. We just put our best foot forward and we're able to, to line that up. So it was a process from, you know, about three weeks ago, you know, those first conversations and then really starting to get uh, more detailed and, Feeling like we had a chance, um, you know, and then and then uh, 
you know, late into the evening. Uh, I don't know, it's a little blurry exactly. Uh, what was that yesterday, the day before? I don't know, but the, the night, of, night of the trade deadline there, you know, it looked like we were going to line up. Dennis Lynn? Juan, you said in the past that at one point when you were an amateur player, you thought you were going to sign with the Padres. What was it like being scouted by them? And what did you think? Why, why did you think it might be your team at the time? I mean, at that, at that time, I was just a little kid uh, trying to make my dream come true. And it feels great. I mean, they, they were scouting me. They were on top of me. They were looking for me down there. Uh, fortunately, we couldn't make a deal. But it is what it is. Uh, it was an exciting moment for me because I was a little kid just trying to become a professional baseball player, and I'm glad they, they were right there for me. I think I'll add one thing. Juan, Juan came to Grand Canyon University with Jason Guzman and Wander Javier and put on an absolute show. And then uh, some genius uh, told Chris Kemp we, we should go after another Cuban prospect as our number one guy and made Juan the number two guy, even though Chris had him as the number one guy in the class. So. Seven years later, cost us some other good players, but uh, I'd say welcome home now. <laughs> <laughs> and Josh, you, you got to uh, D.C., I think, uh, a couple of years after they won a title there. You played with you know, Juan and Max Scherzer, Trey Turner, guys who had you know, done it. Uh, what did you take away from you know, what they got out of that experience? Um, what they got out of the experience, like uh, just winning the title. Um, that the, you know, that's the most important thing. You know, that's why you play the game um, to to be the last man standing uh, at the end of the season. Um, obviously, you know, Scherzer, his his track record speaks for itself. Uh, workaholic and you know, huge competitor. Um, you know, Trey, um, always prepared. Um, you know, always ready to go. Played every day. You know, played through broken fingers and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I learned from them. You know, just being able to to be durable and to. For Max, it was making his starts, and for, for Trey, it was just being available to, to be out there at short every day. So it's kind of what I learned from them, and you know, hopefully I can you know, be you know, lined up in the lineup every night. David? I have a question for either one of you guys, or both. You guys were just in LA. You saw the Dodgers up close. Uh, how do you think the Padres compared to uh, the Dodgers lineup? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we haven't played the, the Padres uh, this year, but I remember, you know, being here last year, it got pretty electric with, you know, the Grand Slam hit off Scherzer um, and, you know, a couple homers from Tatis. And, you know, I, I just remember that atmosphere and, you know, feeling kind of chills at, at first base. So uh, we know what this lineup can do. Um, yeah, we just played the Dodgers. Um, you know, we had, you know, some, some good games against them. So um, I, I think that, you know, with these additions, we're right where we need to be, and uh, I'm pumped to play them this weekend. AJ? Juan, I know it's been a whirlwind, um, and I know you're probably focused on the here and now and the next maybe two and a half years, but would you be open to potentially staying in San Diego for longer than that? For me right now, I'm just, <clears throat> I just came in. I'm just thinking about winning. I'm just come to this clubhouse to bring the energy that I have, all the good vibes that I have to bring here is just to win. I'm concentrating on this year, <clears throat> where where we at in the, in the standings against the other teams, so I'm just thinking, about when, like I told with AJ earlier today. What do you know about kind of the city and the fan base here that, that you've learned from your, your time you've spent? Uh, I don't know too much about the city. I just, I just hear it's 75 and sunny every day. So, <laughs> so I just got to get to know a little bit more about the city and, and see how it goes. Uh, Nick Martinez wore number 22. He joked about asking you for a boat. <laughs> what, uh, what are you going to give Nick Martinez now that you took his number? Uh, he tried to go with a boat, but... <laughs> what kind of think. boat are you going to get? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, kind of like a fishing boat, but... Uh, he really surprised me, because I had never seen something like that. I, I see a couple guys trying to get some numbers and stuff, and why they give it away. But when he asked me for a boat, I was really shocked and surprised. Uh, I thought that was kind of too much, but uh, I tried to explain him. I, I would try to get him a really nice watch, so and he accepted. And I think I'm gonna try to that and make that work. It was worth a try, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll move to Spanish at this time. You got it. Juan, eh, 
¿Cuál es la importancia que tienes en el reto que tienes de frente para ahora llegar al equipo de los padres, San Diego? No, para mí eh, el reto es enfrentar a los otros equipos y como equipo salir hacia adelante, traer la buena energía que, que el equipo necesita, eh, con mi experiencia que tengo del 2019, eh, tratar de hacer lo mismo y tratar de ser el, el último equipo en pie. Oye, y en base exacto a lo, todo lo que has logrado en tu carrera, ¿qué es lo que puedes aportar, lo que puede traer Juan Soto, esta alineación y este roster de los padres? No, todo el mundo sabe lo que yo he hecho. Yo, eh, ¿qué te puedo decir? Yo trataré de jugar al 100% todos los días, eh, daré mi 100%, eh, pase lo que pase. No te voy a decir que seré Superman, pero yo sé que cada día que yo entre en esas dos líneas, yo trataré de dar el 100% mío y jugar al máximo y ayudar a mi equipo con cualquier de decisión que yo necesite hacer. Ya está. Juan, ¿cuál fue el factor determinante para dar el sí a los padres luego de todo lo que se hablaba sobre tu futuro? ¿Qué te hizo dar este, este sí a los padres? ¿Me puedes repetir la pregunta? ¿Qué, ¿Qué fue lo que te hizo decidirte por los padres después de todo lo que se hablaba? Que, ¿Por qué le dijiste que sí a los padres? Eh, yo no tomé ninguna decisión, ya eso fueron los nacionales y que llegaron a un acuerdo con, con los padres de San Diego. Yo estaba bajo la estaba bajo protección de, de, de los nacionales, so, yo no, no tomé ninguna decisión, uh -huh. solamente me enviaron hacia aquí y yo trataré de estar aquí y traer el 100% mío. Pero estás eh, contento, imagino que platicaste con Tatis, con Machado, del, de que vienes para acá. Claro, eh, al 100%. Eh, de estar aquí, eh, estar en un equipo que tiene un buen chance de, de ganar el, el campeonato, eh, me siento más que contento de estar aquí. Juan, bienvenido. Uh, San Diego, preguntarte, ¿qué has platicado con AG, con Peter? Ahorita lo mencionabas en inglés, pero ahora que ya están en la misma ciudad, ¿cómo son estas conversaciones? Hablabas ahorita del de principal objetivo, ganar, ¿no? Sí, no, desde que llegué, entré a la oficina de AJ, me, eh, hablé con él y lo que hablábamos era de ganar, de, de tratar de ayudar al equipo, de traer mi, mi experiencia del 2019, de qué fue lo que hicimos en el 2019 para poder ayudar a aportarlo aquí en el equipo, traer esa buena energía, ese, ese, ese buen sentimiento y, y luchar y salir hacia adelante a ganar. Eso es lo, lo más importante ahora mismo, ganar. Anoche en el segundo juego de la doble cartelera pusieron esa imagen en el Jumbotron y la gente se volvió Loca, ¿cómo crees que sea esa relación con los aficionados? <risa> Será algo bien bonito, una experiencia eh, inolvidable, estar aquí disfrutando con los fanáticos. Yo he estado aquí en contra de ellos y ya sé cómo, cómo los fanáticos se ponen de eléctricos. O yo creo que será una experiencia inolvidable. Juan, eh, Carlos Melo de tu DN. Para preguntarte, hablabas hace un momento en inglés del, de lo potente que está el line-up, eh, nos puedes decir en español, y también llegas a una comunidad latina <ríe> a vida de triunfos, y bueno, nada comparado con Washington. <ríe> no, que el line-up eh, está bien preparado, eh, con estas nuevas dos adquisiciones, yo creo que eh, ya era lo que se necesitaba, gracias a Dios, eh, estamos aquí para dar el 100%, pase lo que pase, eh, sea bueno, sea regular, nosotros vamos a dar el 100%. Yo, yo como Josh, yo sé que es un tremendo tipo. Eh, y nada, suerte para lo, los lanzadores contrarios eh, que vayan en contra de este line no. ah, la comunidad La comunidad latina, me siento contento de estar aquí, ¿sabes? Eh, eh, pienso que me va a hacer sentir como en casa. Eh, algo in, inigualable, ¿sabes? Los latinos siempre nos sentimos como familia donde quiera que llegamos. So, yo creo que será una buena experiencia. Are there any other questions at this point? Thank you very much for joining us today. Good. Sí, es.